Welcome to the interactive web series organized by Jesus Youth as part of the preparation for the Holy Week. The speaker for the first webinar is Neil Lozano and along with him we have uh, Matthew Lozano. We will have participants from different countries and from different time zones. So it will be fantastic if um, as soon as you log in, if you can write your name and the name of your country so that we are aware that you are here for this um, webinar. And also to make this webinar more interactive, you will be able to post your questions in the comment sections below. Please take your questions as soon as the talk starts. We would appreciate if you put your name along with the name of your country. And few of the questions that you put will be picked up for the question and answer session later during the webinar. Let us begin this webinar with a short time of praise and worship. We have a beautiful uh, music team who will lead us through the time of music. We have, um, uh, I now invite um, Shelton Pinheiro, Dina Manoj, Jomi Abraham, and AB to lead us into a time of worship. Shelton is the coordinator of um, Rex Band, and he and his team lead us into a time of praise and worship now hello everybody it is beautiful to be on this online platform uh, today but today uh, we are here at a time when the world uh, as we know it is in a lockdown quarantine and isolation are the key words now as pope francis says um, we are at a we are amidst a storm that exposes our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses, and the superfluities around which uh, we have built our world. And uh, today, as we come together, it is important that we remember that amidst our fears and all our helplessness, Jesus has given us his comforter, his counselor, the Holy Spirit. And he is present in our midst. And that's why we'd like to begin with a beautiful hymn to the Holy Spirit, a song uh, of the Rex Band, which declares that the Holy Spirit is my helper now and forever. So we'll begin this time by singing this hymn, the Holy Spirit is my helper. <laughs> always by my side. The Holy Spirit is my helper now and forever. The one who is always by my side. He strengthens me when I'm weak and worn. Takes away from me desires of this world. He teaches me to love and forgive. Shows me how to pray and fills me with the word. The mysteries of God He makes known to me. The truth now I'm able to see. Wisdom and counsel He gives to me and fills me with power from above. The Spirit is my helper now and forever. The one who is all by my side. The Holy Spirit is my helper now and forever. The one who is always by my side. The one who is always by my side. The one who is always by my side. 
truly the Holy Spirit is in our midst and it is beautiful to join many people from around the world here uh, as we come together and uh, led by the Spirit, uh, led by our movement. Lord Jesus, we believe uh, and affirm your presence today as we sit here. We know that you are powerfully present here and around us as the world closes the doors Lord Jesus, we know that you open new wellsprings within us. You open new doors within us. And this platform itself is a great example of what you are opening in our lives. Lord, we thank you and we adore you and we affirm your presence with the psalmist. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Together let us praise Jesus and his great presence in our midst as we declare, Lord, you are our Lord and we worship and adore you, O Christ, together as a community on this online platform. That was a beautiful time of prayer that we had. Uh, thank you to the music team for this beautiful time that they led us through. And now I take the privilege of inviting Neil Lozano. Neil is the founder and executive director of Heart of the Father Ministries and the Unborn Ministry. Neil is also 
the author of best selling book unbound a practical guide to deliverance he is an international speaker and has spoken at various global conferences neil we welcome you to this uh, jesus youth webinar Seems there is a small technical uh, uh, error, um, and while the technical team is working on bringing on the uh, volume for Rani, we are uh, we will keep um, this session in our prayers and in a very special way. It's um, I'm very glad to see that uh, we have a lot of participation. I'm just looking at the chat screen, and we see people from Canada, we see people from the US, we see people from different countries in the europe different countries in uh, asia it, it's such a beautiful experience to see so many people um, joining in for this uh, webinar uh, the technical team is working on uh, bringing up the volume for um, neil and during this time in a very special way we will um, pray for all the countries which are uh, affected by covid 19 situations we are aware of uh, the situations um, globally so we'll keep um, we'll keep this um, situation in uh, uh prayer
Can you hear me now? Are you able to hear me? Oh, glory to God. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened, but I'm very glad to be back with you. Uh, it's such a privilege to be able to speak to you today. Um, the, uh, the topic uh, that I always speak about everywhere I go is called Unbound uh, Freedom in Christ. And it's based on my book, Unbound, A Practical Guide to Deliverance. And we have had the privilege of taking this message throughout the world. And that's where I met some of the, uh, the leaders of the Jesus Youth Movement. So we'll be, uh, I'll be focusing my thoughts towards the Jesus Youth Movement that has connected us today. But, but no matter how you got connected to this uh, webinar, I am very happy that you're here. And I hope that these words will bring a, a blessing to you and point you in a direction that it may just change your life. So I'd like to begin by uh, starting with uh, a story and then I'll share two scriptures. And then what I'm gonna do is share with you a, an outline, a little brief outline introduction to Unbound, the Practical Guide to Deliverance. Uh, <clears throat> a number of years ago, my wife Janet and I and, and uh, went to Rwanda and we were, went to Rwanda shortly after they had the genocide. And when we were headed there, I was, I was fearful, I was intimidated, I was, uh, I was filled with doubt. I was thinking, what could we offer these people that have seen family members slain in the streets and, and, and seen so much blood and, and death? And uh, here we're going to come and speak to them about deliverance and freedom and and uh, but when I got up to speak to them, I began to speak out of some other place. I just started to I, well, this is what I said. I actually, you know, sometimes you say things and you realize it it comes from a deeper place. And um, so this is what I said. I said, there's nothing in our experience that can relate to exactly what you've been through or what you've seen. But the Lord has given it to us to understand the human heart. And the human heart is the same throughout the world. And ever since that moment, when I spoke those words, I just came to understand and realize that the basic gospel message and the way that we present it is something that uh, speaks to everyone because it's, it's about the human heart. And it's about how God reaches the human heart and helps us to respond to his grace. Two scriptures that I want to begin with. The first one is, um, is from Ephesians. Now, is from Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And it says, we have been delivered or we've been rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the beloved son. And, uh, and each one of us that has been baptized and believed in Jesus and taken hold of the faith that we've been given, uh, we have been delivered. We have been set free. And uh, we've been brought into the kingdom of the beloved son. So a lot of times we have to start off with like just using the word deliverance. It's a, it's a good word because it's another word for salvation. And it's part of the process of, uh, uh, and we're also part of a process where we're taking fully hold of, of the salvation that he's given us. So many have, uh, so many really where we started was having evangelized so many people. And then a year later, two years later, there's, there's a struggle. There's a struggle to take hold of the freedom that they knew they received when they surrendered to Jesus. The second scripture I wanted to share is um, from Ephesians 6, verse 10. Uh, actually, verse 11. I'm just going to read one scripture because of time. One verse. And it says, put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the, the devil's schemes. Uh, another translation says the devil's tactics or the wiles of the devil. And so what we want to do in teaching you the five keys, which I'll go over in one moment, 
is we want to encourage you and help you to take your stand against the schemes or the strategies that the devil has to hold you in bondage or to bring you into bondage. The five keys that I keep referring to are repentance and faith, forgiveness, renunciation, authority, and the Father's blessing. And so now I'll just uh, briefly go so through some of those keys with you. The first one you're very familiar with uh, is repentance and faith. Uh, Jesus came announcing uh, in Mark's gospel, he said, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. Uh, <clears throat> uh, repentance, the Greek word for repentance is metanoia, which means to have a change of mind that leads to a changed life. So as we are confronting the good news, that good news, that message of good news, the revelation of Jesus Christ and salvation in him means that it should change our mind and we should think differently, not like the world thinks, but according to the revelation, according to the truth. And uh, so we know that the, the, primary, the primary aspect of the first key is surrendering to Jesus making that decision uh, and and choosing him to be your Lord, choosing to be his disciple. And part of that is the ongoing repentance of sin, but it's also ongoing recognition that around sin is deception. And so that the deceptions that lead us into sin and the deceptions that take hold of our mind as a result of sin are are part of the devil's schemes and one of the ways that we deal with the father of lies jesus tells us that the devil is the father of lies one of the ways that we deal with that is through ongoing repentance ongoing surrender to jesus so the second key is a key you're also familiar with but people around the world that have heard our teaching on forgiveness, which is the second key, have, uh, have had, had their lives changed because of some, some perspective we have brought to it. Jesus gave his life for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, I like to think of it this way. Jesus is the Father's gift of forgiveness. He gave it to us. And when we refuse to forgive, when we decide to hold on to resentment or bitterness or uh, unforgiveness, we're basically rejecting the Father's gift. He wants to release forgiveness in this world through his Son. First, he forgave us through Jesus, through his death, and through his resurrection. And now we're part of his life. And to extend his life in the world, we need to continue to live a life of forgiveness. But what we found is that most people that even want to forgive find themselves quite often stuck in a particular way. So we have developed a teaching called the power of forgiveness. And in that teaching, there's, we list 15 reasons why people who, uh, who want to forgive fail to forgive. And so, um, so I'm going to go over three of them with you. And, uh, and later on in this, uh, in this broadcast or the webinar, we're going to give you a way of actually accessing for the next four weeks, uh, these teachings that I'll be referring to. So you get the, you can get the whole, the whole teaching. Uh, one reason people fail to forgive is because of a lack of faith. They have seen the pain of what they've been through. They've seen the horror of the trauma that they, they've experienced. And they believe in their heart that it's impossible to forgive. It, it just, how could, you expect, how could God expect me to forgive? It's too much. And, um, and so sometimes people have said that to me in the past. 
And I've said, you're right, it is impossible. Um, but, you know, in the scriptures it says, what's impossible with man is possible with God. And then I would invite them to give God a chance to do it in their hearts. And, uh, and I've never had anybody turn me down. And I don't remember anybody that wasn't able to break through if they were willing to forgive even though they thought it was impossible. A second uh, important uh, obstacle to forgiving is we minimize it. We look back at the trauma that we've been through or the, or the thing that happened to us, and we say, oh, it's not that big a deal. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. Jen and I were in, uh, I forget what country at the moment, uh, but we were talking to this woman and we and she felt burdened and oppressed and we we were leading her through the five keys and uh and we took her through the fourth key which command and we said is anything coming to your mind she said well i just i still don't feel free and so i said to her i said is there anybody else that you might need to forgive and she said oh well when i was when I was 12, my cousin tried to rape me, but it's okay because he didn't penetrate me. He didn't complete the work. He didn't complete what he wanted to do. And of course, Jan and I were thinking that's not okay. See, what we do sometimes is we think about what happened to us and we minimize it. And, and so that we can live with it, uh, apart from the immediate torment of it. So she minimized the experience that she she had thinking it was okay. Uh, but when we led her to, to face up to the fact that it wasn't okay and that it was significant and she forgave, she was set free. So sometimes in our lives, if we know that we're gonna tell somebody what happened, it's gonna cause us more trouble or our parents aren't going to understand or we're going to get blamed, then we just kind of file it away in a way that just minimizes it and try and we try to forget it, but we don't really forget it. It's still here. The third, uh, the third re reason uh, that sometimes we get stuck is because we haven't really accepted God's forgiveness. Uh, Deep down, even though you surrendered to Jesus at one time, deep down, now you're living a life of trying to earn his acceptance by being good. Instead of being good because he loves you and because he gave you his life, you're trying to be good to earn acceptance, to be good enough for his love. And if, if you've fallen into that trap, which I call the older brother syndrome, you fall into the trap of being more like the older brother than the prodigal who has been in, who has been embraced by the father. Then, uh, then you're going to find it hard to forgive. Because the source of forgiveness is the forgiveness we have received, and what we know, the mercy of God. And when we're living in that mercy, then we have mercy to give. The fourth key uh, is renunciation. So as I said, there's, there's 15 reasons we give in the talk. And, and one of those is bondage to evil spirits and the influence of evil spirits. And I'll be uh, covering that a little bit in this fourth key. So uh, the fourth key is called renunciation. Uh, we have the power in the name of Jesus to renounce our enemies and to take hold of our freedom. The issue sometimes is that we don't really know who our enemies are or we don't know how to name them or we don't know how to, to express our will in conjunction with Jesus uh, to tear down and pull down the power of our enemies. So when I, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about evil spirits that influence us 
by attaching themselves to the lies that we have received or believed, some place of agreement in our lives. Uh, they've attached themselves to uh, the habits, to, to sinful habits, to all those negative emotions in our lives. Uh, and they, th those things that we carry that are, are not part of the kingdom of God, that are evil, that are negative, that don't line up with the truth, are all ways that the enemy can gain some influence uh, to hold us into torment or to hold us into bondage. To renounce means that I'm making my declaration in the name of Jesus by his power. I'm going to renounce my enemy. I'm done with it. I'm not going to fellowship with it. I'm taking my life back through what Jesus Christ has done for me. Now, under uh, in this talk on entryways, we present eight entryways, and I'm just going to give you uh, three of them real quick. I'm going to read one testimony related to one. First one is sin, unconfessed sin, sin that we don't confess, but we deny. We, we just say it's not so bad. We justify it. We make a place for it in our lives. When we make a place for sin in our lives, we open ourselves up to greater and greater influence from our enemy who wants us to be bound in sin, to take away our freedom, to make us slaves. The second one uh, is how we respond to trauma. So a lot of what we do in Unbound Ministry, and Unbound Ministry has to do with listening to people's story, and then applying the five keys. And, uh, and so what we're listening for a lot is how people have responded to the terrible situations they've been in. One aspect is what happened to them, but the more important aspect in terms of taking hold of your freedom is the response you make because the response becomes a pattern that gets repeated and repeated and repeated in a way that robs you of your freedom to live the life that Jesus has won for you. So I had, uh, I had listened to someone's story. I'd led her through the five keys. And when she left, she looked a little bit uh, disoriented. So I made sure I had uh, someone call her up to make sure she was okay. And this is what she wrote in response. I'm going to read you her exact words. Many years ago, I always saw myself as average. That all took a turn for the worse between the sexual abuse I endured, many surgeries, and infertile issues. I felt like a monster until my unbound session. I never felt more beautiful. In fact, I never felt more beautiful in all my life. The issues that came up were healed. I no longer cry or feel terribly sad when I think about them. They have gone from subjective to objective. I know they were there. I remember, and I see those as part of my past, but I'm not attached to them. I'm not attached to them anymore. It was a huge release. I really did not know what I was supposed to feel. But as I drove home and digested everything, I realized it was just gone. And the weight of the emotional ties I kept wrapped around my heart were gone. And I felt physically lighter. It was amazing. Now she went through some terrible things, but those terrible things took hold of her life and her thoughts wrapped around them, and the enemy got behind them, and she, by the grace of God, was set free. I'm just going to mention the uh, third entryway, and that is occult activity. There's occult activity uh, that has never been renounced. Maybe it's been confessed, but it's not been renounced. It, it's a very good thing 
to take the time to renounce any spirit that came to you through that occult activity and break the power of any words that were spoken. The fourth key is authority. Uh, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God. Uh, he did it with his disciples and he told them to go proclaim the kingdom of God. The kingdom represents God's authority, his glory and his power. And, uh, and we carry his authority over our enemies. So we can tell our enemies to go. And so without covering a lot of details, how we, we do that is we focus on what the person has already repented of, forgiven of, forgiven and renounced. And we say in the name of Jesus, I break the power of any spirit that they have renounced to leave now. So we're not covering everything. We're not uh, challenging demons. We're just covering what uh, the entryways, that, the doors that have been closed. Now for the Father's blessing. Um, Jesus came to bring us to the Father, to restore us to the Father. Uh, when Jesus came to the Jordan River, the Father's blessing was restored to us. Uh, uh, when, when the heavens opened up and spoke over Jesus, as Jesus was identifying with us, identifying with our sins, being baptized for the repentance of sin, which he did not need. He was identifying with us. And, and when he came out of the water, the Father spoke, this is my beloved son in whom I love and whom I take great pleasure. That's the delight that we knew in the Garden of Eden that was robbed of us and it's restored to us in Jesus. So speaking the Father's blessing and learning how to speak the Father's blessing is one of the, the greatest uh, gifts that the Five Keys of Unbound brings. So now uh, in a few moments, we're gonna have a couple testimonies and we'll, we'll ask for uh, uh, Matt, come on. But before I do that, I'm just gonna show you how simple uh, going through the Five Keys can be. It can be a lot more complicated when you listen to somebody and you you hear uh, their story and you hear what God's doing in their hearts. Uh, it can be a lot more than this. But right now, a lot of you are isolated. Uh, you may be lonely. Uh, you may be filled with, uh, you may be battling with worry and fear or doubt or unbelief. Maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're depressed. Uh, maybe you've been trusting in Jesus for, for uh, many years, but right now it just seems like he's far away. It's like this is testing my faith so much that I just can't break free. I just aren't, I'm not trusting him now. I'm filled with fear and anxiety. So I'm just going to take you through these keys. And if, if you're in a position where you can just speak out loud after me, now speaking out loud, forming the words gives greater authority to what you say. So I'm going to invite you to do that. If, if you can't do that where you're at, you may just do it. You may after this, after this uh, webinar, you may just go off and, and, and do it yourself. So I'm just going to pray and you can join the best you can. Lord Jesus, we just, I thank you for your life. I thank you for what you've done for us. I thank you that you have died for our sins, that you've taken them all. And Lord, we want to, we just want to release our hearts to you and, 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 and give you every, every form of sin and unbelief and doubt and anxiety. And Lord, we thank you that you've taken all of our sins and all of our junk and all of our fears to the cross. And I ask you, Lord, to, uh, to release me by your mercy because I want to walk in your Holy Spirit. I want to walk as a child of God. I want to walk as a member of the new creation. Please give me your Holy Spirit and let me walk in the power of the Spirit. 
Now just take one moment and think if there's somebody in your life, just one person that made you feel unsafe early in life. One person that we want to forgive today that made you feel unsafe. As I said, things repeat. So some situations repeat. And we close the door through forgiveness. So just say or whisper, in the name of Jesus, I forgive. And then just whisper what that person did. I forgive in the name of Jesus. Then we're going to do a little renunciation. And if you can, you whisper along, or you do it later. Just say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce hurt. In the name of Jesus, I renounce discouragement. In the name of Jesus, I renounce depression. In the name of Jesus, I renounce worry. In the name of Jesus, I renounce fear. In the name of Jesus, I renounce doubt. In the name of Jesus, I renounce unbelief. In the name of Jesus, I renounce mistrust. In the name of Jesus, I renounce loneliness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce isolation. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the fear of the future. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the fear of death. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the fear of sickness. In the name of Jesus, I give up control to you. And I renounce the spirit of control in Jesus' name. Now just take a moment. If you want to renounce something else, just do that. And then you can just say this, in the name of Jesus, yeah, and I really want you to say this, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of any spirit I have renounced and I command it to leave me now. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that your kingdom would fall, that your spirit would rest upon your children everywhere. I ask that your peace would come And I ask you to open up heaven over every child of God and let them hear the words that you spoke over your son. This is, this is my son. This is my daughter in whom I take great pleasure. I take delight in you. When the prodigal turned home, he just turned. The father came running to him. He ran to him and he hugged him and he kissed him and he restored him. Put a ring on his finger and gave him sandals and his cloak and he kissed him and wept over him. Jesus is bringing you home to the father and he wants you to know the strength and security of being in his love. Receive the Father's blessing. Receive his blessing. Receive his favor. Hear his whispers. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to turn it back and uh, we're going to have a couple testimonies and my son will and my son will come on share for a moment and or two and then we'll uh, We'll have questions, and I'll follow the leaders as we as you got us through. Thank you so much, Neil. That was um, such a fantastic uh, time of learning for me, especially. And I'm very sure it's the same for all the hundreds of people are uh, online now. 
and uh, there are already a few Jesus youth who have benefited immensely by attending the training programs of um, Unbound Ministries. Uh, so to share a couple of testimonies, we have two very beautiful people this evening. And first up, I wish to invite um, Jilu Changat. Jilu is the coordinator of Jesus Youth in America. Uh, Jilu is married. She stays in US and she is a mother of um, two children. She stays with her family in the US. So Jilu, um, uh, welcome to this webinar. So we look forward to listening to your story. Great. Thanks, Joy. Um, it's such a privilege and blessing to be here to share a little bit about my experience with Unbound. Um, there have been so many beautiful experiences, especially over the past year. Um, but I came to uh, Unbound, um, I started to uh, have an interest in attending the ministry training and in that process, read the book and listened to the, the conferences. And uh, the Lord just opened up my heart in so many ways, showed me so many areas um, where, you know, he wanted to bring freedom and healing. and. Um, coming to the ministry training and the prayer session during that time, it was a, a very powerful um, and, uh, you know, liberating experience. And so I thought it was a kind of a culminating experience of, of that freedom. But what I found and what I wanted to share a little bit about today was that ongoing experience of incorporating um, the keys into my life and uh, in, in that standing in that authority as a child of God and standing in that freedom. So I'd come to know Christ um, at, uh, in a very profound way at 20 years old. I became, that's when I kind of gave my life to him. And what I realized after um, starting with Unbound is that there were a lot of areas in my past before that age of 20 in a special way that I hadn't really known God or, or brought God into the difficulties of those experiences. So um, in, in that time, I started bringing um, as memories came into my time of prayer, I started bringing them to the Lord and recognizing the different truths and trying to understand the the roots that were kind of underneath um, the lies and the the habits and patterns of thoughts that I believed. So uh, at one one time I was uh, experiencing a lot of anxiety and uh, the memory of a car accident that my my family had been in at the age of uh, ten came to my mind and I I brought it to my husband and asked him to pray with me through the five keys and I. I wasn't sure what was bothering me. Uh, but as we prayed, um, I, I didn't know his name or even his face, but the, the image of the driver who hit us, he was drunk at the time, came to my mind. And I, I really felt very clearly that the Lord was asking me to forgive him. Um, and I didn't know why I I had I didn't harbor any resentment. I didn't think about this man, you know, for so many years. But it was very clear that the Lord was asking me to forgive. So I, I forgave and and just you know I, I also felt that anxiety lifting in in that time. Uh, fast forward a few months, and the memory of this car accident kind of came again, but this time it was a slightly different perspective. I was remembering myself as a 10-year-old child. I actually had to have surgery uh, on the day of my birthday, and um, but my sister was actually in very critical condition in another hospital, and my parents were with her because her, her situation was so serious. And, uh, you know, in the past, that memory had always, um, you know, been a fairly positive one. I remember the nurses taking care of me. My family friend had been there. But this time when that memory came up, I, I, saw, I felt a lot of sadness. And I didn't know where that sadness was coming from. And um, as I started to bring this uh, to prayer, Neil had mentioned that aspect of minimizing the pain. And I recognized that um, I had never allowed myself to... Um, to experience that that real sadness as a as a child of, of feeling alone and um, you know on one hand I, I would try I, I felt like you know these are uh, you know I questioned did my parents abandon me or do they care or love for me but I know that those weren't um, those weren't the truth you know I knew that they did love me uh, but what God was revealing to me in that time was that um, you know, I had uh, gotten used to this pattern of keeping kind of these normal human emotions. Any 10 year old would feel sad or alone in, in that kind of experience. Um, and I had gotten used to kind of minimizing them. I'd gotten used to kind of pushing them aside to kind of deal with um, the situations of life. And this was kind of a way that I, I thought and, and acted and, and um, lived. And so uh, the Lord is just inviting me to um, enter into those areas. And um, I found that um, just even understanding that and recognizing 
um, the deeper roots that are underneath that, the self-reliance that I may experience or the areas where, you know, I'm not able to trust, like all these things are connected and, and just kind of bringing that, um, the five keys into my prayer and into my life has brought so many experiences of freedom where I've seen this tender nature of God, this loving of nature of God, where he is so gentle, you know, and part of the beauty of the five keys is really coming to that blessing of the father. And so to receive that healing and blessing in my life in, in over the, the past few months and years, um, and to be able to provide that is, is so much what I've experienced through the five keys. So uh, I hope that many of you will be able to go into uh, deeper into these, these teachings and to be able to practice it in your life. And um, it's such a very gentle and beautiful way to come into um, freedom and to come into the truth of, of what God wants us to live. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lud, for so long. It's listening to your experience of uh, uh, what you've learned from the Unbound uh, Ministry. Um, we have another person, another very beautiful person who would uh, share her testimony with us. And we have uh, Dr. Bina Manoj who will share her testimony with us. Uh, Dr. Bina Manoj is the head of department um, of English in St. Desas College. She resides in Kochi with her husband and she is a mother of two children. So Dr. Bina, welcome to this webinar and we are all waiting to listen to your story. I'm here to share how Unbound has helped me in my personal life and my ministry. I've been active in the Jesus Youth Movement for close to 30 years. I was born and raised a Catholic and knew about Jesus, but it was only later that I um, got to have a deep and personal experience of Jesus at a charismatic retreat as a student in college. And my life was transformed, especially after the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Soon I became part of a Jesus Youth uh, Fellowship group. And since then, I've had many beautiful spiritual experiences at retreats, conferences, and inner healing sessions. It was in February 2019 that I attended the Unbound Freedom in Christ conference held at Cochin in India, led by Neil Lozano. I'd read the book before attending the conference, and I thought it would be useful, but I never knew the impact it would have on me till I attended the conference. I must say that never after my initial retreat have I experienced such a deep transformation and liberation as I experienced at the conference, especially on the last night when I was prayed over by a team using the five keys and I was set free from all that was binding me. Till that point, as long as I can remember, I was aware of a deep sadness within me, though I couldn't exactly pinpoint the reason for my sadness. But at the conference using the five keys, I was set free. I especially loved the Father's blessing, which revealed my identity as a favored child of God, who was a father who rejoiced over me. After the conference, there's one thing I always remind myself, and this is something I often catch myself telling others, my friends, neighbors, my students and colleagues, and even casual acquaintances. I say, do not worry, do not fear, and do not doubt. For worry, fear, and doubt will open up resting places and thoughts that are not of the Holy Spirit. Now, whenever I find myself upset, anxious, or afraid, I just spend some time in prayer and go over the five keys, and I experience the freedom that only Christ can bring. Also, it has become easier for me to forgive others and to be more understanding of others and their failures. In June last year, I signed up for a three month online Unbound course where I also had to work with a partner and had discussions with participants from different parts of the world, which gave me a deeper understanding of the five keys. I would recommend this course to anybody who's interested to get to know the Unbound model more deeply. Also, by way of a follow up to the conference, I attended a training program along with other friends in the Jesus Youth on using the five keys. This has helped me immensely in my ministry and also at my workplace. Now, whenever I come across someone who needs help, 
I call up one of my friends and together we minister using the Unbound model. And it's amazing to experience the way in which Jesus leads them to the bosom of the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. I take this opportunity to thank Neil Lozano and his team for introducing us to the Unbound model of deliverance. May it continue to lead many more people to experience the freedom in Christ that I have come to know. Thank you and praise God. Thank you, Dr. Obin. It was such a listening to your testimony and you have been from the ministries. And we wish for all the people who have the stuff to make um, the use of um, uh, the five keys in your personal life. And it is some tools that I wish to introduce you to to help you in your personal work. One is the website, it's www.tosfather.com. And if you browse this website, you'll come across a lot of videos. And now, and now um, we'll take a short video of you. We'll get more familiar with the materials and tools of the Unbound Up ministry. The world filled with people. Every day, each one of us walks around with baggage. Whether we know it or not, it weighs us down slowly wearing us out. Maybe some of us are holding on to old resentments and anger. Maybe we are lonely and isolated. Or maybe some of us just find it hard to love ourselves. Whatever it is, it traps us, keeping us from experiencing the breathtaking beauty of the world around us. What if there was a way to be freed from that? What if we could finally let go of those things that are keeping us from truly living life to the fullest? What if someone told you that freedom is experienced through an encounter of love? Some of us have experienced love that can free us for a moment, but there is a love that is everlasting. Unbound was designed to help you experience the heart of the Father, a heart filled with love so powerful that it transforms us completely making us know a joy, a lightness we've never felt before. Freedom from resentments, freedom from loneliness, freedom from addictions, for the first time knowing who you are. Through this personal and loving prayer ministry, you can break the chains that bind you. You can experience a life renewed through the power of Jesus. He offers his love, and he offers to take the weight off of your shoulders. All we have to do is say, Yes. What do you want to be free from? There are a lot of questions that many of you have asked. Uh, before we get into the questions, there is um, a quick announcement I wish to make. The heart of the Father Ministries is offering scholarships of 40% of the basic training e courses. Uh, and for all those who want to attend this webinar, this is valid. Um, this offer is valid only for two days by the end of. Um, April. So those interested can register online using the coupon code JesusYouth40. It is JesusYouth40 without any space. So you can log into the website, make use of this coupon code, and um, get great benefits out of it. And um, right now we will have um, we have a lot of questions that were asked from many of you. We will have a few questions, and to answer your questions. I now wish to invite both Neil and Matt, Neil Luzano and Matthew Luzano. Uh, I had introduced Neil earlier. Uh, I wish to introduce Matt. Matt serves as the Director of Leadership Development for Heart of the Father Ministries. He has 12 years of um, experience uh, in teaching. He and his wife, Jennifer, along with their five children, they live in uh, Philadelphia, USA. So. 
Matt and Neil. Welcome both of you. Thank you. It's uh, really good to be with you this day. Uh, just to tell you a little bit more about myself, I'm uh, married to my wonderful wife, Jen, who's also, Jennifer is a part of our ministry. Uh, she's our coordinator of events. And uh, that e-course that was mentioned in the coupon uh, is something that I, I really enjoy teaching. We get people from all over the world uh, learning about Unbound. And uh, that's a really great opportunity if you have a chance to take that course. It's a nine-week course, uh, and you can really learn uh, how to use the five keys with others in your ministry. I have five children. Uh, that's why I'm wearing a microphone to filter out the, the noises in my house. Uh, I have a one-year-old. Uh, the oldest is 17, and the youngest is one. So we have five children running around our home. And... Uh, it's just, it's, it's great to be here to, to talk about Unbound. Uh, Unbound is something that changed my life. I was set free uh, in my 20s uh, from a, a very significant lie. Uh, the lie that no one could understand me was something that really crippled me uh, throughout most of my life. And uh, when I was able to use forgiveness and renunciation, uh, the power of that lie was broken in my life. And so I'm I'm really grateful for Unbound, and it's also just a privilege for to be able to teach it and to be able to help people engage with it. Um, so I, I just look forward to, to all of your questions and, and to spending this time with you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, um, there are quite a lot of um, questions that we have received from our um, uh, audience tonight. Um, the first question, we have picked uh, only a few of them, and the first question I wish to ask on behalf of the people who have attended this webinar is how or what are the symptoms to know what are those areas, struggles, or sufferings that require deliverance and those that you are to embrace? You want to take that, Matt? Sure. So for all of us, we are called to take up our cross and to follow Jesus, which means uh, that in this life, we will experience suffering. And uh, suffering can bring us closer to the Lord. So it is an opportunity to unite our passion with his passion and to, uh, it, we can actually produce fruit through suffering. Uh, however, suffering can also be the opportunity for the enemy to whisper, lies into our hearts. Sometimes when we're suffering, uh, we experience confusion and fear. And the enemy would, uh, would tempt us to believe that God is not good, that he's not a good father. Uh, and we can fall into to patterns of thinking or behavior that are not fruitful uh, because of the, the way. So, so for me, the test is, is the suffering that you are experiencing drawing you closer to Jesus or is it pushing you away? And, um, you know, it's, it's important that we look at our thoughts. I think the key is to look at our thoughts. If, if our thoughts are honoring God, uh, during this type of this, this suffering, um, it's, it's, it, it could be God allowing us to go through something that's drawing us closer to him. If it's not, uh, if it doesn't belong to God, then it doesn't belong to us, and we, we can renounce it. I just add that sometimes people uh, uh, people make a distinction between inner healing and deliverance, and uh, and we really tie it all together in the five keys. So if that's that's part of the source of the question, we don't spend a lot of time discerning, no matter what the issue is in someone's heart. We'll, We'll take them through the keys and see what God uncovers. Next question. Thanks, Matt, and thanks, Neil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready with the next question. And uh, one of the questions um, our audience has asked is what are the indications to recognize that someone needs deliverance in a particular area? Well, um, there, there are a couple things that that uh, 
would indicate a lack of freedom in a person's life. Uh, one would be uh, habitual sin, someone who goes through, um, you know, goes to confession, um, you know, engages in all the disciplines, and yet they just cannot break a certain pattern of sin, um, something that seems to be habitual and almost empowered uh, in such a way that, you know, despite their best efforts and, and cooperating with the grace of God, there's, there's a lack of freedom in that area. That's, that's uh, one reason why, why folks come to us. Uh, others would be, you know, identifying with, they're recognizing that they have identified with lies, deceptions, um, you know, uh, they have experienced uh, evil in their life. Um, they feel that they can never get away from it. They can't, they can't break from it. Um, I, I think for any follower of Jesus, you, you know, you want to see yourself, your, your life becoming more like him. And uh, as you follow him, the Holy Spirit begins to show you areas of, of your life that, that don't look like Jesus and that, that are kind of wrapped in darkness. And a lot of times we, we struggle against despair and feeling like, when am I ever going to change? You know, those are, those are kind of the general uh, things that people come to us with, uh, just an awareness uh, that they need greater freedom in their life. Yeah, um, sometimes people get confused. Uh, sometimes people get confused about the word deliverance, as I said before. But what I want to say is that everyone needs the five keys. Everyone needs to go deeper with Jesus and surrendering to him. Everyone can forgive in a deeper way. Everyone can renounce the things that hassle them, whether it's it's real deep or or, or just superficial attacks. Everyone needs to know their authority in Christ and everyone needs to press into the Father's blessing. Uh, sometimes people make the mistake of listening uh, to our teaching and they're thinking about somebody else. I would really l encourage you to think about this for yourself first. And as you experience God's working in your heart with these areas then you will have something to give somebody else. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of questions coming in. And the next, next question I wish to ask you is, um, uh, do you need a special charism of deliverance to practice amount, or is it meant for everyone? You already answered that. Uh, this uh, next part to this question says, um, do we need any special practice? You need to be uh, committed to Jesus. <laughs> you need to be in good relationship with others. Uh, you need to be, uh, if you're in a ministry, you need to be under authority. Um, but, but really, when we're breaking it down, when we break these keys down, we're really talking about evangelism. And, uh, and if you're just really doing the keys as we teach them, it's an effort to evangelize other people. And we're all called to do that. And it's, it's sometimes when people jump into something more than what we're presenting, uh, then you need more special preparation or practice. All of, all of your charisms can help in this ministry, but there is no specific charism needed to, to engage in the ministry. Just like you don't need a, a charism to go proclaim the good news. Uh, you, you, you need humility. You need to walk it with the attitude of Jesus. Uh, and you need to walk in compassion. And you need to be a, a good listener. Uh, but all those things are things that we can get better at and, and don't require a particular charism. Thank you, Matt. It, um, there is one particular question which says, um, do we have to use all five keys every time or is it okay to use partial use help? 
Yes, you can use uh, one key <laughs> or two, or uh, but if you're not getting free, you might find helpful all five keys. But if if there's just something going on in your day, just uh, just use the key that Lord gives you. All right. So Pastor Leo says fine. Uh, okay. Um, the next question it says. Um, how to renounce and take authority when you are still afraid or scared? Um, well, then you need to have somebody with you to, to deal with your fear, uh, your irrational fear of the devil, uh, your fear. So, so it would be good if you had somebody to talk to and to go through the five keys with about the fear. And, and there's also a, a, a renewing of the mind that needs to go on. So we talk about the influence of evil spirits uh, and how they attach to things that are already in us. And what we need to do is close the door. Uh, 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 places we have gone, people have had a distorted view of evil spirits. They think they can they can do a whole lot more than they are able to do. Uh, people need to know they're children of God and uh, he's their protector. And so a lot of this is foundational things that have to be renewed in our mind uh, so that uh, the five keys can become normal. Okay. <laughs> Um, and there's one popular question. Um, has asked the same question. Uh, the question says, um, is having an extremely competitive mindset, especially in a corporate atmosphere, a part of life, or is there a need for unbound and deliverance? Do you want me to answer that one, Dad? Yep, go for it. Um, it could be. So there's nothing wrong with being competitive. Uh, to have the, the drive for greatness is certainly a good thing. It's, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, it, it can be a virtue to be magnanimous. However, if our competitiveness is driven uh, by a sense of insecurity, by the need to prove ourselves, uh, self-righteousness, um, the idol of performance, all of these kinds of things um, that come from insecurity, come from fear, that don't really belong to a child of God, th this could indicate an area where uh, you're seeing a sinful pattern. You're seeing uh, this bondage. And what God wants to do is to help you find your identity in him, to find your security in him, so that you are, you are, you're still driven. You, you want to do well and you want to do, do things excellently, but not from a fear of not measuring up or from a spirit of inadequacy or, or these types of things. So really it's not, um, it's not like you did this, therefore you have a spirit. It's more in the conversation that we have with people, uh, these fears, these insecurities, these things come up. And so I would, I would say if you're asking that question because you're seeing something uh, in your, your relationship with your work, that you would just ask the Holy Spirit, uh, show me what's in my heart. Show sure. me those areas of darkness. Amen. Thanks. We have a couple more. <laughs> uh, yes, gonna... I think we have uh, time for another two more questions. Okay. If, if yeah, all right. And uh, the next question is um, halfway through a session, halfway through a session with someone, you're convinced that the person has not really surrendered to Jesus. Do you continue with the rest of the keys for completion's sake, or leave it incomplete? So we would we would lead the person to pronounce uh, uh, 
the pronounce or a, a, a recommitment or a surrender to Jesus in the first key. And if you feel like their heart is closed to Jesus, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes even though they've made an act of the will, they've wanted to surrender, then uh, sometimes the blockage comes later. And they have unforgiveness, they have resentment, something else is holding them back, fear of surrender, fear of intimacy. Uh, maybe they've, they've blamed God in the past, they need to repent of that. There's a whole bunch of things that keep us from surrendering. But if you're talking about somebody that really has not, has, has said, I, I do not want to surrender to Jesus, then you never really should have got past the first key. Uh, so if someone sincerely wants to, even though they don't get it, and but they professed it, then you're free to lead them through the keys. Uh, uh, but it's but let me say this: it's always a working together. You're not doing this for them; they're doing it with you. So. So if there's a lack of cooperation, a lack, lack of connection between you and them, then yeah, you should stop and just move to the fifth key and to pray blessing for them. Okay. Thank you, Neil. And um, uh, this is one last question during this session now. Um, even though i mean the the person who has asked this question says uh, even though i renounce this it feels like it comes back to me or the roots didn't go from me and it bothers me should i do it on daily basis or what recommendation um <clears throat> i would uh i would uh Ask the Lord for someone that could really help me uh, go through it together with somebody else. Uh, you know, we all struggle with sin, and there is a time when God wants to deliver us. Uh, we we have we know that when we confess our sin, especially in the sacrament, He forgives us, and we need to not come under condemnation. We need to continue to confess and repent. But on the other hand, we, we also need to continue our struggle. Uh, we don't know why one person is weak in an area uh, and subject to a bondage in an area. But what we do is keep pressing on. We keep pressing on to, to helping that person, uh, fighting the good fight, asking God for revelation. Real deliverance begins with revelation. Uh, just like uh, J. Lou, uh, you know, she she said that these things came to her mind. So once she started using the keys, more things came to her mind uh, because God knew she knew what to do with it. And it was time. And there, there is a time for all of his God's children to be delivered of, of sin. And we certainly have, have seen people that have struggled with uh, sins like pornography for years uh, get set free. Doesn't mean that they didn't choose to go back to it, but the bondage that they were in uh, was broken, and they were then able to make a, a choice to stay free. And so uh, be encouraged, uh, just press on, uh, you use the keys the best you can, but you have to trust God with your heart and with whatever bondage you find yourself in. And so, you know, thank you, Neil, and thank you, Matt. Let me before I uh, sorry, please go ahead. Before I turn it over to you for the final prayer, I just want to remind you: this is the first time ever that we've released our Unbound Conference free for a period of weeks. We're streaming it, so if there's something in this that we've uh, touched upon that we didn't explain well you have a unique opportunity to get that uh, in the next few weeks to listen to these talks. And, uh, and, uh, and if you can get my book, I don't know in the different countries how available it is, but Unbound, the Practical Guide to Deliverance has been changing people's lives for uh, almost 20 years. So um, 
So, and, and the third thing which we announced that there's a special discount on Matt's uh, presentation of on the uh, e-course, the basic training. If you were able to, if you can't get the book and you can listen to these videos, you'd qualify for the e-course. So that's all before you and we hope to connect with you again. Hope to visit you maybe sometime in the future. May God bless you all. I just wanted to add Thank that um, I, I could see on my uh, email popping up, there's a lot of people already signing up for the e-course, which is really exciting. <laughs> um, if you, so in order to see the Freedom in Christ talks, uh, go to our online store at heartofthefather.com, uh, select uh, digital collections and Freedom in Christ, and then select the session that you want to see. It would be much, uh, I've heard a lot of people having difficulty uh, getting the free option from Safari if you're using Safari as your browser. So please use uh, Google Chrome or, or another browser. Uh, don't use Safari to try to check out. Uh, so you just you just uh, click on the item that you want. Uh, it'll come up as zero dollars, and then click purchase, and then you can get all eight of those talks for free for a limited so, time. So go yeah, for it through April. Yep. Thank you so much, Neil, and thank you so much, um, Matt. Uh, it was um, lovely having you with us um, today, and I'm very sure that a lot of us, a lot of us, Jesus, you have benefited from this. And um, I'm very sure that we will continue benefiting from um, from you from from the online courses that, that you offer us. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, to conclude with a short time of song and prayer, now I invite um, the music team uh, led by Sheldon, who will lead us into a time of short prayer. So as the music team comes in, I wish to remind all of you again uh, of the website, www.heartofthefather.com. So you will be able to join the uh, web, co web, web courses offered by uh, the Unbound um, Ministries. So it is uh, amazing and Jesus has been wonderful. And the promise of Jesus to bring us fullness of life uh, has, is wonderful. And that is what has been happening today. The way to a fullness of life uh, was shared. And uh, today let us say a short prayer. And before that, a song uh, praising the wonderful presence, the wonderful, um, uh, the wonderful power of Jesus.
Father, we thank you for the freedom that comes through your Son, Jesus. We pray for this world at this moment of time, amidst all the darkness and helplessness and fear. We pray that power and the freedom of your Son, Jesus, might be exposed to everyone at this point. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this platform. We thank you for Heart of the Father Ministries. We thank you for the Jesus Youth Movement around the world and for every person who has logged in here uh, during this webinar. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have opened a new wellspring, that you have opened a new source today in our lives. Together as a community, we thank you and we say the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. It was a beautiful time uh, listening. It was an interesting place and I'm so happy reading your comments, your comments and your questions. And uh, we had this the first of the three part series webinar and the next webinar would happen on Wednesday, that's the 8th April, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And we will have Sister Emmanuel from Jubilee who will bring us through. And the food be by Dr. Mary Hill's US. And Dr. Mary Hill's uh, webinar be on 11th April, that's the Saturday at 9 p.m. So it is uh, the next one is on 8th April at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time and the final one is at 9 p.m. on the 11th of April. So it was wonderful having all of you with us. Looking forward to the next webinar. Thank you so much.